Hi, this is Geometry Lesson 9-2, Proof Using Coordinate Geometry. In this lesson, we'll be able to prove geom geometric theorems using algebra and the coordinate plane. Let's start with critique and explain. Dakota and Zhang are trying to show that triangle ABC is a right triangle. Each student uses a different method. So let's look how uh, which method they use. So Dakota used uh, slopes of AB and slopes of BC um, to determine that the slopes are perpendicular uh, slopes by uh, finding the product, which is negative 1. And by definition, if the product of the slopes is negative 1, um, that means they're opposite reciprocals and they are perpendicular. The lines are perpendicular. So triangle ABC is a right triangle since it has one right at least one right angle, or one right angle. So Zhang uses a different method. Zhang will figure out the distances. AB is equal to BC, where the distances are um, equal to square root 13, and AC is square root 26. And if you figure out uh, the uh, and see if the Pythagorean theorem works, um, with the with the sides, um, be, because Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles, you can do that and say, oh, square root thirteen square plus square root thirteen square is equal to square root twenty six square. And how do you know what a, b, and c is in the Pythagorean theorem? Well, C is the hypotenuse, which means it's going to be the longest side by definition. So the longest side here is square root 26. So this equation can be set up to uh, see if this works. And if, they're, if, uh, if they are equal to each other, so that's 13 plus 13 um, is equal to 26, which is correct, which is true. So triangle ABC is a right triangle. So either way, they come with the same conclusion that triangle ABC is a right triangle. Okay, so part A. Did Dakota and Zhang both show that triangle ABC is a right triangle? Yes, I just explained it. And so let's try to explain that in words and write that down. There's going to be, just, just a warning, there's going to be a lot of writing in this lesson. So... For part A, we can say that Dakota showed two sides meet at a right angle by finding the slopes of two sides and showing that their product is negative 1. Zhang showed that the side lengths of the triangle satisfy the conditions of the inverse of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and part B, if the coordinates of triangle ABC were changed to 2, 3, 5, 5, and 7, 2, how would each student's method change? Well, they would use the same method, but how would um, the work be different, right? You just have to plug it in in different ways. Um, so the new, using the new coordinates, you can still figure out the slopes of A, B, and B, C. You can still figure out the distances of A, B, B, C, and A, C using the same equations. And you can compare them to see if uh, if the slopes are uh, perpendicular by looking at their product, which may equal to negative one, and in that case, that would be perpendicular, um, which means it has a right angle, and if it has a right angle, then the triangle is a right triangle. And you can use the distances to plug it in into the Pythagorean theorem, and using the inverse uh, of the Pythagorean theorem, if that satisfies um, it will satisfy, it will prove that triangle uh, ABC is a right triangle. Okay, but it's this, it's, uh, they're, they're just using different methods, but they should still get the same results because none of the methods are wrong. They're, they're logically correct um, and mathematically correct. So it should still give them the same answer.
So you can say, you can reason out, you don't actually have to solve for it um, because it's an explanation problem. So you can explain that the new coordinates translate the figure up and right. If angle measures and side lengths remain the same, both Dakota and Zhang could use the same methods with the new numbers and get the same results. Okay, so that's where we're starting from. We want to keep in mind that what we learned in last lesson, well, that was, that, that was what we learned in Algebra 1, but please uh, remember what we learned in Algebra 1 about the distance formula, the equation of the slope, and also the midpoint formula, and not to mention the uh, formulas for areas for each shape as well, depending on what kind of information we have. So let's think about the essential question for this lesson. How can geometric relationships be proven algebraically in the coordinate plane? So yes, geometry and algebra are related. They are uh, math. <laughs> They're in the field of math. So this is where they, they meet and uh, make a magical collaboration. So we'll, we'll keep thinking about how they are useful to each other. So let's start with example one, plan a coordinate proof. How can you use coordinates to prove geometric relationships algebraically? Plan a proof for the trapezoid mid sigma theorem. So um, in this lesson, we'll have four examples. Let me double check. Yes, four examples which in which um, the first two examples are going to be about planning and writing the proof. Uh, we don't actually have to solve for it, but we need to be able to plan and write a proof um, thinking about algebra. And then example three um, and four, we're going to plan and write proof together and then actually try to solve. So a lot of computations will come later in the later part of this uh, lesson. Um, but we're going to start with planning, how to plan, and how we can start thinking that way. So uh, how can you use coordinates to prove geometric relationship algebraically? Plan a proof for the trapezoid mid segment theorem. Let's draw and label a diagram that names all points to be used in the proof. So, Notice that the points are not specific. We are assuming um, that if we plan a proof for any values um, of uh, x and y mm, for each point, but they're different points that make the shape uh, will, and, and make a plan for a proof that works, it will work for any coordinate point, okay? So it is easier to make one of the points, uh, place one of the points in um, on the origin so that it's just zero comma zero and that, that doesn't have to change, right? But at least one point could be easy, right? And then the other points we're going to say relative to the origin, B is going to have a certain uh, value of A and certain value of B so that it lies approximately here. It doesn't have to be. Um, C is going to be another value of C, but it has the same Y value of B. Uh, so we can write the same variables for the same number. Okay, you see that? And then D could be any, it could be another different um, value. Uh, for x, and then it's going to have 0 for y because it's going to lie horizontally with the origin. Okay, now we have a trapezoid, right? So the points um, don't have to be exactly in this way, but this is an example of a trapezoid, right? For any values of a, b, c, and d. So this should work um, as a, in, a, in a plan as an example in a plan. So we're gonna set parallel lines horizontally so that we can simplify the computations. We don't have to make it harder. 
So yes, if you can simplify your steps and your planning and your proving, then do it. But when when you cannot simplify and you simplify, that could be a problem. But in this case, it it's fine. Um, we're gonna restate the trapezoid mid segment theorem. Do you know what trapezoid mid segment theorem is? Well, that's why we have restated it in this uh, in the textbook. So the theorem says the mid segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base and its length is one half the sum of lengths of the bases. That's what the trapezoid mid segment theorem says. Okay, um, so we want to restate that so that it's easier to prove. So how are we going to prove it? So parallel to each base, algebraically, that means the slopes of um, AD and BC are going to be the same, right? Because uh, those are our bases in this uh, graph. And length is, and its length is one half, so the mid segment. So mid segment is a segment in the middle right here. That is the midpoint of AB and midpoint of CD, okay? It's one half the sum. So the length of this is one half uh, the sum of lengths in the bases. So you add the length and base together, bases together. So AB uh, plus BC, and you divide it in two. And that is our line EX. So we want to plan it. To show that the mid segment is parallel to the bases, we want to figure out the slopes, right? And we want to show them that the slopes are equal. So using the coordinate points for E and F, we can use the midpoint formula to figure out uh, the coordinate points for E and F, and then use the slope formula to figure out the slope of E and F. And then uh, you can compare the slopes for B, C, and A, D, um, and see if it is one half the sum of the length of the bases. Okay, so that is a plan. You don't actually have to solve it in example one. So let's look at try number one. Plan a proof to show that the diagonals of a square are congruent and perpendicular. You want to plan it. So you can explain it using uh, what kind of algebra we're going to use, what kind of method we're going to use, um, what do we need to prove, okay? So first, you may have to gather information and see what, uh, what you can prove, how you can show using algebra, and then explain that and say, oh, if this is that and that is this, uh, then this is true, it is congruent and perpendicular. Okay, let's see if you can figure that out uh, by yourself and come back when you think you have the answer. Okay, are you ready? So you can just follow the steps from example one. So first, uh, we, drew, we drew some possible points on a coordinate graph, right? So you can draw a square on a coordinate plane as well, where you can have a vertex A uh, at the origin, and then you can have a vertex B where it's on the same, uh, in the same um, X value, right? And then, uh, and so, uh, and, but your height is different, right? Um, and then C could be any number, right? But it has to be, it has to have the same height as D. And then D has to have the same X value as C and A. So it's gonna be zero, uh, wait, it's gonna be A comma zero, and that's gonna be A. So let's, Let's, we're going to say we're going to draw. So first of all, we're going to draw it on a coordinate plane where this is A, 0, 0, B, um, 0, comma A, and then C is going to be A, comma A, 
and then d is going to be a comma zero, right? And then what do you do? Um, you're going to use a distance formula to figure out the length of the diagonal, so B, D, and A, C using the coordinate points. And then you're going to show that they're equal. And if they're equal, by definition, if the lengths are equal, they're congruent. And how do you prove that they're perpendicular? You want to find the slopes of the diagonals as well using the coordinate points, the endpoints and then show the product is negative one, and if it is, they're perpendicular, okay? So we just have to explain that. You don't have, you don't actually have to solve for it. Um, you're gonna explain that in words. So let's write that down. Okay, so you can literally write, draw a square, A, B, C, D on a coordinate plane with vertex A at the origin, vertex B, A comma zero, vertex C, A comma A, let me capitalize that. And vertex D, 0, comma, A. And then you can use the distance formula to find the uh, length of the diagonals to show they're equal. Find the slopes of the diagonals and show the product is 1. And that way, uh, you can show that the diagonals of a square are congruent and perpendicular for any point um, A, B, C, D on the coordinate plane. All right, let's look at example two. We're going to write a coordinate two. So how is it different from planning? Well, planning, you just plan. You just think about how you're going to solve it, and then you're going to write a proof. So write a coordinate proof of the trapezoid mid-segment theorem that we just talked about in example one. Use a conditional statement from example one to decide what is given and what is to be proved. So um, because it is a trapezoid, we need to have one pair of parallel sides and um, the, other, the other sides cannot be parallel, okay? Um, so trapezoid A, B, C, D is given with midpoints E and F on the sides. Um, we want to prove that line E, F, which is the mid-segment, is parallel to A, D and line B, C and also that la the length of EF is equal to the length of AD plus length of BC divided by two. That's the mean of the sum of the bases. So we already planned that we're gonna apply, uh, that we're gonna use the diagram for example one and then use the coordinates to show that line EF um, is equal to the slope of line EF is equal to the slopes of lines A, D, and B, C. And EF is equal to the mean of the basis. So the actual proof, we're gonna, we're gonna write them. So midpoint formula comes first because we need the coordinate points for E and F, right? So the midpoint formula says you can find the midpoint using two points you can literally add the x values together divided by two and the y values together divided by two. And that's your midpoint, okay? So the midpoint for AB is labeled E and zero plus A divided by two is A over two. Zero plus B divided by two is B over two. And F in the same way is going to be C plus D over two and B over two. And that's already simplified. You can't do anything else, okay? Step two, um, we want to figure out the slopes for A, D, B, C, and E, F. Um, since they're all horizontal, we know that they're all gonna be zero, right? Uh, because we have the same values for E and F in the Y values, um, we know that they're at the same height. They're both gonna be at the height of E over two. Right? So all the lines are parallel. And now we want to determine um, a, the lengths so that we can prove EF is equal to AD plus BC over two. So figure out the lengths using distance formula. So using distance formula, um, 
since they're all horizontal lines, you can just figure out by using um, the differences of the, the, the horizontal distances, so the x. So just subtract um, your x values, and the length of AD is D, length of BC is C minus A, and length of EC is C plus C minus A over all, all of that over 2. So plug that in into this equation where we want to prove EF is equal to AD plus BC over 2. So EF, this whole thing, is equal to um, D plus C mi minus A parentheses uh, divided by 2. And if we simplify that, we get that C plus C minus A over 2 um, is EF, which means... which means it's the same as EF. So yes, AD plus BC over 2 is actually the same uh, as EF. Although this is not a numerical number, you can still prove it using um, variables. Okay? The va so the bases and the mixed limit are parallel, and the length of the mixed limit is equal to the mean of the base lengths. So therefore, uh, the mid segment is parallel to the basis, and it is equal to the basis uh, divided by 2. And we're done. So now it's your turn. You can, uh, you can look at the steps in example 2 and follow that steps to prove this. Use coordinate geometry to prove that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So you did plan for, uh, for this and try number one. Now you have to prove it using the same steps, okay? See if you can do it by yourself and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So if you look at your plan, you already have the coordinates here, right? You've labeled that A is gonna be the origin, B is zero comma A, C is A comma A, and D is A comma zero. So using the coordinate points, you can figure out um, the lengths and the slopes of the diagonals. And remember that the diagonals are going to be, since this is A, B, C, D, diagonals are going to be A, C, and B, D, okay? So figure out, wait, not A, B. A, C, and B, D, and the slopes of A, C, and B, D, and then we can compare them. So A, C, the length of A, C, A is 0, comma, 0, and that is, again, 0, comma, A, and that is going to be A, comma, A, that is going to be A, comma, 0. So A, C, C can be represented um, by square rooting A square plus A square, right? Um, so that is 2A square square root, the whole thing, which is really equal to A square root 2, okay? BD is going to be square root a minus 0, a squared, and then 0 minus a squared, negative a squared is still a squared. So that's going to be the same, a squared root 2. So they are congruent, right? AC and BD, line BD are congruent. And let's figure out the slope using our coordinate points here. Um, the slope equation is the differences of y values and over the differences of x values. So AC, A minus 0 divided by A minus 0, right? So that's going to be A over A, which is 1. And then BD is going to be negative A over negative A, which is going to be 1. So, uh, wait, wait, never mind. A, A minus 0, so that's A, negative A over uh, positive A, so that's actually negative 1. 
And if you multiply 1 times negative 1, it is negative 1. So the diagonals are perpendicular as well. So using that information, let's craft it up nicely in words and write the answer. So you can explain the steps you took. Draw a rectangle ABCD on a coordinate plane with vertex A at the origin. And vertex B uh, is, wait, so sorry, 0, comma A. And vertex C, A, comma A, because the square needs to have the same length for each side. And then vertex D, A, comma D. And length of AC is going to be square root of A squared plus A squared, which is equal to A square root 2, which is also equal to BD. And the diagonals have the same length and thus are congruent. And also, wait, did they say we need to prove that it's perpendicular? Oh, we did, we did an extra step, but yeah, that's going to be <laughs> perpendicular as well. But you can stop there since they only ask for the congruency. All right, example three. Plan and write a coordinate proof. And now we're going to do it together all at the same time. We're going to write a coordinate proof of the congruency of median theorem. Um, so what is a median theorem? If you're given triangle ABC with medians AD, BE, and CF, you can see that the medians represent one vertex to the midpoint to the opposite on the opposite side of the vertex. So C to the, the midpoint of AB, B, which is our vertex, to the midpoint of AC. Okay, so those are called medians. And we, we, uh, the median theorem um, says that medians are congruent at point P such that AP, so this is P, uh, this point is uh, two-thirds of the whole thing, A, the distance from the vertex to the midpoint, AD. And so same for BP is equal to two-thirds of BE, CP is equal to two-thirds of CF. And so you can plan to say, how, how can we prove when we're given um, these are medians, right? We're first going to draw and label a triangle in a coordinate plane with um, some variables. And then you're going to use midpoint formula to figure the midpoints out for each side. And then you're going to draw the medians and locate the points of intersection. And using algebra, uh, you can figure out the point or intersection. Uh, but first, you have to write the equation of the lines uh, for at least two lines and then to, uh, solve for the x and y variables uh, for the solution. And then, so systems of equations will give you the, point, the coordinates of point P. And then, um, finally, you can find the distance from point P to each vertex to figure out if it's true, okay? So this is going to be a long proof, um, but using algebra, it is possible. So first, draw a triangle, and we're going to label it 2A to B um, and 2C0. Why do we add 2 there? You'll see how it simplifies later, but if you didn't know, you can change it later as you uh, solve the, as you write the proof later, but you'll see that um, multiplying by two uh, for, for your constant um, is going to simplify your proof. And then you're going to find the coordinates of D, F, E, because if you find the midpoints, instead of dealing with fractions, you might want to deal with a nice little whole number. So a plus c comma b, c comma zero, and a comma b would be our midpoint. Okay. And 
And then you're going to find the slope of the line containing a, b, and c, f, so that you can write an equation. Okay? So if you have a slope and a point, which we already have a point, so that's why we're trying to figure out the slope, so then you can use uh, the points will form to figure out the equation right away. Um, using your points will form, do you remember the points will form? y minus y1, where y is the variable, y sub 1 is the y value, a specific y value of a point, is equal to slope m times x minus x sub 1. Okay, so that is the point slope form. Um, and so if you plug it in using um, the slope that you figured out and the coordinate points that you figured out, you will see that the equation for CF is equal to um, BX over A minus 2C minus 2BC over A minus 2C. That looks complicated. That's okay. You don't need to simplify any further. Equation for AB um, is simpler than that, bx over a plus b, okay? And then you're going to set the expressions uh, equal to each other using substitution. So this part, this expression is equal to this expression, and then you can solve for y, and then you can substitute that into your equation and, sub and solve for x, right? And then you'll get x is equal to 2 times a plus b over 3. Okay. And then, um, yeah, if you solve for x, uh, that is the case. And then you're going to substitute x into y to solve for y, and y is 2b over 3. And so your point of intersection is going to be 2 times a plus b over 3, and 2b over 3. Okay. We did go over this in detail uh, when we learned um, the points of uh, the, the, po the points and triangles, right? So if you want to see the detailed explanation, you can go back to topic uh, to that topic. I think it was around topic five. Um, but anyway, to show that point P is on BE. Um, you can find an equation for the line that contains BE, um, which will which will say, oh yeah, P is also on that line. Uh, but that's just this step is just to check and make sure. As long as you have two equations and figure out um, the point of inter intersection, that should be intersecting uh, all the other uh, medians. And then you're going to um, complete the, tr the proof, use the distance formula to show, so yeah, that's, that's, that step is going to be your try question. Actually, we're not going to finish that um, as an explanation, but now it's your turn. We set it up already, so we're almost there. We set up all the things for you. And now let's see if you can finish the proof. To complete the proof in example three, use the coordinates to show that um, AP, BP, CP are equal to two thirds of AB, BE, and CF. Pause the video, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you guys ready? So everything's set up, you just need to use coordinate points to prove that these equations are true. So whatever you figure out for AP and AB, BP, BE, CP, and CF, those are the lengths, right? Um, you just plug it in there. So now that we have the coordinates, we can just figure out the lengths first and then um, plug it into that equation um, to see if that's true. So. First of all, AP, um, AP being equal to AD, we want to figure out AP. So 
since um, P is, since A is zero comma zero, AP, uh, the distance would be really easy. You just square that, square that, and then square root the whole thing. Let me use other colors. Okay. So AP is going to be um, square root of this minus that square, that minus that square, right? The x values and the y values uh, squared, the differences of x, x and y values squared together. So then you square q times a plus c divided by 3 squared plus qb over 3 squared, and that's ap. And if you look at the equation that we're trying to prove, AP is equal to 2 over 3AD. So if you see AD, let's, uh, let's figure out AD as well. So AD is, where's the D? D is A plus C comma D, right? So using that coordinate, AD is square root of A plus C squared plus D squared because A is 0 comma 0, so B minus 0 is D, okay? So then we want to simplify that and see if that's really 2 over 3 of, uh, of AD, right? Because that's our equation. We want to see if AP is really two-third of AD. So it kind of looks like it is, but you want to solve it out, okay? So I'm going to move down here. If you square that, that's 4. And then A plus C square over 9. And then that's 4, b squared over 3 squared, 9. Okay, you have to square the whole thing because that's parentheses. And then, oops, the square here should really come here. And then that's equal to, you can use distributive property to get 4 out of 9 out. And that's a plus c squared plus d squared, all in the square root, okay? And then, if you square root that, that's the same as 4 over 9 times square root of a plus c squared plus d squared, and so that's equal to 2 over 3 times a plus c squared plus d squared, which means it is two-thirds of AD, right? That's exactly the same as AD. So it is true, okay? And so using the same method, you can figure that and figure out and prove that BP is truly two-thirds of BE and CP is truly two-thirds of CF. So let's write that down. AP is two-thirds of A plus C squared plus D squared, which is equal to two-thirds of AD, because AD is square root of A plus C squared plus D squared, okay? And then you can say that BP is two-thirds, using the same method, it's going to be simplified to two-thirds times square root of C minus QA squared, plus 4b squared, and that's equal to 2 thirds of be. And be is square root of c minus 2a squared plus 4b squared. And finally, cp is equal to 2 thirds square root of 2c minus a squared plus b squared, and that's equal to 2 thirds cf. Okay? So that's done.
we're, we're done with showing and proving that it's true. All right, now this is your last example, example four. Use coordinate proofs to solve problems. An interior designer wants the center of a circular fountain to be equidistant from the corners of a triangular lobby. Where should he place the center of the fountain? So now we have a real world example of where we can um, use this in, in a real life. Um, now we see a triangular fountain, right? This is a triangular lobby. Um, we want to find the center of circular fountain to be equidistant from the corners of a triangular lobby. So where should he place the center? Right? So it needs to be equidistant from the corners, which means not equidistant from the sides. It should be equidistant with the vertices. Right? So it should be equidistant to A, B, and C, where A could be uh, 0, 0, B could be A, B, and C can be 0. And so let's plan how we can prove and how we can figure this out. Um, because the center of the fountain should be the circumcenter of the triangle by definition, um, we know that perpendicular bisectors make circumcenter, the circumcenter of the triangle, right? And the property of the circumcenter is that it is equidistant from the vertices. And so we're, we're dealing with circumcenters. Um, and so in order to do that, we want to figure out algebraically perpendicular bisectors. Um, so this will involve equations of lines, slopes, and writing equations and figuring out solution, the solution for the, um, the system of equations, right? So we're going to determine the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of line a, C, and A, B, okay? So we want to figure out perpendicular bisectors that bisect the lines, but it's also perpendicular, okay? Bisect and perpendicular. Bisect and perpendicular, okay? So, Equation of the perpendicular bisector of AC should be vertical line where it, it goes through the vertex. Um, wait, it doesn't have to go through the vertex of C. Of, of C. Um, but it needs to be the midpoint, right? So um, C divided by 2, comma 0 should be your midpoint here. So it should go through this point, and it also needs to be a perpendicular uh, line. And so by having the slope, which is perpendicular, so that's undefined, um, your x is equal to c over 2. It's the equation of the line here. That was easy. x equals c over 2. That's your equation of the vertical line. It's easy because you don't have a slope, it's, a, it's an undefined slope. It's a vertical slope. And then um, the perpendicular bisector of AD sh uh, should contain the point that is the midpoint, which is A divided by 2, and then B plus 0 divided by 2. So that is the midpoint of AD. And then you need to figure out the slope using um, the perpendicular slope um, using the slope of AB, which is going to be the slope of AB is B minus 0 over A minus 0, right? So BA. And the perpendicular slope is going to be negative A over B, the opposite reciprocal, right? So this line will have the slope of negative A over B. And it's going to go through the point a comma a over two comma b over two. Okay, so using the point slope equation, you can easily write an equation down, and then you can change that, change this form into a slope-intercept form. And then using that, 
you can calculate the intersection since you already have x because the equation literally is x equals to c over 2, your point is going to have the same x. So this point has to have x is equal to c over 2. So using that, you plug it in into this equation for x. So instead of x, you plug in c over 2. Okay, you see that? And then you simplify that, which is going to say your y value is going to be a squared minus ac plus b squared over 2b. So your uh, center of the fountain should be at the point c comma 2, comma c over 2, comma a squared minus ac plus b squared over 2b. Okay? And it doesn't have to be a nice uh, number because we didn't have enough information, right? Um, they gave us variables for these points. So we have to use expressions. All right, now this is the last triad of this lesson. A table has a top that is a right triangle. Okay, it has the right angle and a single support leg. Where should the center of the leg be placed? So it corresponds with the center of gravity of the table top. Okay, um, plan a coordinate geometry proof to find its location. So did you understand what this means? So this triangle is a tabletop. Uh, you usually have a circle tabletop and then uh, four legs, right? This is normal table. <laughs> but your table will have a right triangle table, okay? And then it's going to have one leg in the middle, okay? This is going to be a, a triangle table that only has one leg in the center. Okay, and so it will be the center of gravity. So center of gravity is also known as the centroid. So the centroid is the center of gravity in geometry. Do you remember what centroid is? So centroid is the center of the triangle where uh, where it is the intersection of the median. So from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side um, is going to be the median. Okay, we talked about it in the previous example. So using that information, where should it be located in that triangle? So from this vertex to the midpoint of that one, this vertex to the midpoint of that one, this vertex to the midpoint of that one, that should be the uh, center of gravity, which is the centroid, okay? So plan a coordinate geometry proof using algebra to find its location. Okay, see if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, so first step, you need to, wait, are you ready? <laughs> I forgot to ask you. Okay, ready or not, here we come. First step, you want to graph it on the coordinate plane, right? So we want to place one vertex um, on the origin. So A could be the origin point. And then B could be um, on the same x-axis. So B could be A comma zero, right? And then, actually, let's do 2a comma 0 because we're going to find the mid midpoint. So that's going to be easier for us. And then c could be um, now 0 comma 2b, where it doesn't have to be the same number here, right? So that's why you have a different variable. And so that will give us a right triangle. And then we want to figure out the midpoints for these. So using the midpoint formula, figure out the midpoint, that's going to be, this is going to be a 0 comma, wait, 2a divided by 2. Sorry, that's going to be a comma 0. And then the midpoint for that one, 0 comma 2b plus 0 divided by 2 is just b, okay? 
And then we can figure out um, the third midpoint, but it's not necessary. Okay, and then um, you get the median. You figure out the median. As long as you have two equations, you can figure out the point of intersection because that's where the medians are going to intersect at the same point. Okay, in order to check your answer, yes, you can figure out all the all the midpoints and all the equation of mid, uh, the mid medians and find their intersection both ways. But um, as long as you have two medians at least and two equations of the line of the medians and then find the intersection of that, uh, that's going to be fine. Okay. So. Um, actually, we don't actually have to write the proof, so we're gonna just plan it. We're, we just have to explain it, okay? So using that, what do we do? We're gonna use the equation of the line to figure out if uh, the intersection point, and that intersection point, once we figure out, that's the answer. That is gonna be our centroid, which is going to be the center of gravity, and that's where um, the leg should be placed. Okay, so let's type that up. Okay, so here we go. We can explain the, uh, the points that we labeled and then explain how we're going to prove it. So first draw right triangle ABC on a coordinate plane with vertex A at the origin, vertex B, um, which is 2A comma 0, and vertex C, which is 0 comma 2B. And then we're going to find the equations of the medians from vertices B and C and then find the intersection point. Um, and the intersection is the centroid or balance point of the triangle. Okay, and that's it. So, great job. Um, this lesson is, uh, is all about proving. And we need to be able to use algebra. So let's summarize our concept. Writing a coordinate proof is going to be sim is going to have similar steps, but first you need to first be able to determine what kind of numerical relationships you have to calculate. So, what kind of algebra skills do I need to use, right, to show that the statement is true? Is it really necessary, right? Um, you're gonna draw and label a figure on a coordinate plane, so that's the start of your proof. And you're gonna choose coordinates that simplify computation. Don't make it super hard. You wanna make it simple, sim simple so that you can um, com computate it uh, in a simple, in the most simple way. Because it's gonna get complicated anyway. Okay? Because you're gonna have variables that represent all possible numbers. And then you're gonna calculate numerical values needed to prove a statement or solve a problem. Okay, so planning is actually the hardest part, I should say, because you need to be able to see what needs to be done in order for you to do it. Um, calculation part is fine. You've already learned the algebra part, so if you don't make mistakes, you should be fine. But the planning part needs to be thought out really well. So, for example, choose coordinates that parallel lines are horizontal for a trapezoid. And then for triangle, you're gonna choose coordinates. So the line of symmetry is the y-axis. That is also an easy point. Or you can choose a vertex on the origin, right? Um, and you can choose points uh, so that when you're figuring out midpoints, it's convenient to figure out the midpoint and deal with it um, rather than fractions, right? So those are some, some uh, tips for you to be able to plan the proof and write a coordinate proof well and effectively. All right, that was all about lesson 9-2, proofs using coordinate geometry. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, please feel free to ask me in class. Otherwise, we'll continue with lesson 3, which is about circles in coordinate plane in the next video. Okay. Bye.